guys. Welcome to episode 29 of Do Not Worry. I am your host, Anthony, coming to you for the second time from the heart of the 09 in Zoom Kail. I still have COVID. I am away from my studio in Jaitewe. I'll be back there next week, hopefully. Um, so just wanted to come to you guys with this new episode. Please, before we get into it, please take a second to like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we actually just crossed 4,000 subscribers. Um, I'm, I'm happy about it, but like I'm, I just feel kind of too depressed and like demotivated to, to actually be happy and celebrate. But thank you guys so much. Like I never thought I'd hit 4,000 subscribers in like seven months. So thank you. I honestly never really knew what to expect from this channel as a whole. So uh, I really do appreciate it, even though I'm, I'm very unmotivated today. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I, I had to convince myself to record this podcast. Uh, I just don't want to get out of the rhythm of making YouTube videos because it's so easy to get used to not making videos and it's easy to get complacent. Uh, and there's a couple of topics that if I don't talk about this week, they're going to become too irrelevant down the line. The topics for this week's episode, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, Lebanon, my mental state, how everyone's doing currently. Uh, spoiler, it, we're not doing good. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about social media etiquette in Lebanon, given our situation. Like, what is it okay to post online? What is it not okay to post online? Uh, and I want to talk about uh, uh, Nour Kairouz, who is a Lebanese ski champion who ended up saying a bunch of racist shit against Syrian refugees on her Instagram like three weeks ago. kind of want to talk about that. But I just wanted to be honest with you guys. I'm feeling very down. I'm feeling very low. Uh, my mental health, uh, to quote Bo Burnham, is at an ATL. It's at an all-time low. Um, you know, I've had COVID for like 10, 11 days now. So obviously I've been alone at home. But also everything that's happening in the country, gasoline, electricity, uh, bread, just everything. Everything. The fire in Akkad. Um, it's all taking an incredible mental toll on me. And not just me. I'm sure on all of you guys watching. So I, I will ask for a little bit of patience with me because I, I'm not feeling 100%. You know, I'm not 100%. I'm, I'm, and again, I'm obviously not alone. I, I actually had some things prepared to read to you guys. Like anytime you go on Twitter, it just reveals how depressed people are. And here's a thread of tweets that I quite enjoyed by uh, Tala on, on Twitter. Uh, I miss the little things that we used to take for granted. I miss celebrating new jobs or leaving toxic ones, meeting up with friends haphazardly, or planning a road trip. I miss being cozy under the covers because the AC keeps me cool, ordering comfortably the things I crave without worrying about expenses or poisoning. I miss saying I'll pass by to friends and arguing with my mom when I'm late. I miss looking at pictures of areas in Lebanon and then being in them a few days later. I miss dinners at restaurants we hadn't tried and drinks at sunset. I miss dancing, having funny encounters that we talk about the next day over coffee at Eunice. I miss waiting at the airport to have my passport stamped and wondering how the army man will hit on me this time. I miss discovering, I miss having dreams, of completing my education and having the motivation to look at programs abroad. I miss going out with barely any money and making it work. I miss the little things that any 20-something-year-old cares about. Playing cards, listening to loud music, shopping, reading in a coffee shop. I miss the little things that we used to take for granted that any 20-something-year-old anywhere else in the world wouldn't be missing. A very bad morning today and every day to our politicians, please, who have rid us of our little things. Um, that hit close to home, man. We haven't had a normal life in Lebanon in, since October 2017 and you know before then for a lot of other people. So I miss the little things as well, man. I miss simple things. I just want to go to the movie theater, man. I just want to go to a movie theater. There are three movies that I really want to watch right now. The Green Knight, Free Guy, and Song Shi when that comes out. I just want to go to the movies, uh, watch these things with my friends, have a normal time, go back home, discuss the movies, uh, maybe turn on the TV. You know, any conversation we, we have with friends in Lebanon revolves around the dollar situation, gasoline, electricity. We can't escape our nightmares. And uh, yeah, it's hard to keep going. It's hard to see any way out. And I know I've talked about this before and I don't want to be too much of a Debbie Downer. And it's just silly. So like this YouTube channel that uh, I consider it incredibly important to me. Like, for example, I was willing to turn down a full time job a month and a half ago to keep this YouTube channel, you know, going and keep this as my priority. That feels incredibly silly today. For example, today, my whole YouTube channel and my whole YouTube career feels silly and useless. And I'm like, what am I doing? And where is this going to go in like a year from now? And I'm, I'm sick of feeling that way. I just want to have a normal, happy life. And um, I increasingly, you know, that is impossible here in Lebanon. And um, I am increasingly looking at options to leave 
But uh, yeah, that's just what I'm dealing with. And speaking about leaving and not wanting to leave, but being forced to leave, my boy Jadventure uh, dropped this video that went incredibly viral all over Instagram. Uh, and don't forget, he has a YouTube channel. I keep talking about it here. Uh, it's called Mabed de Fil. And let's just, again, he captures what a lot of Lebanon's youth is feeling right now, what we constantly feel like. I, I'm 30 now. I'm not as young as Jad, but like I... I left Lebanon when I was 17 to go to college and I came back in 2015 to try to make something happen here. And now to feel like I'm being forced to leave again uh, fucking sucks. كنا مش مصدقين نفوت على الجامعة ولحق على اصحاب ومشاريع واخبار صرنا كل يوم منودع حدا ومنروح نبكي على هالمطار خي بس انا مين قال لك عبالي فيلم من لبنان وكب عشرين سنه وراي وروح عيش مدري وين هلا هيك فجاه ما بقى في فلافل من عند لويس وبدك تقول لي انه بدي انسى طوق ناجي وزياده كبيس يا زيادة كبيس شو بكم؟ تم شايب شاب روح وين بلاقي مثل أنا؟ أو الصبحية عند مرمر ومنقوش تزعتر من إيدان ستاتنا أنا هون تعلمت أعمل بسكليت عدو لبان هون علمنا خيل السكي وصاروا يقولوا له ولد أختك مثل الختان كنا نروح الكنيسة نتخانى من بدو يدق بالجرس وعلى الجمعة العظيمة في معكرون بطحينة من تهية خلص والله مع بالي فل بس الهيئة ما رح يتركوا لنا مجال ورح يجبروني اترك الكل وسافر بركي بقدر حقق كل هالأحلام مار يترك هالفيديو بس يرعى لنا 40 سنة هنرجع منشوف هالفيديو ونتضحك على حالنا يا شباب واحد اثنين ثلاثة واكيد ما God damn you, Jad. Always had to hit us in the fields with that fucking music and everything. So it's extremely poignant. Um, I agree with everything Jad had to say. And that is what everyone's feeling right now. And again, I'm coming from a place of privilege to compare to a lot of people. And uh, I can barely hold on and I can barely take this. So I don't want to linger on this too much. I don't want to get everyone too down. But yeah, that's just how it's been a rough, uh, rough couple weeks. I've been wanting to talk about this topic for a couple of weeks, uh, and it's about social media etiquette in Lebanon right now, given our situation, given the economic collapse and everything. What is it okay to share on social media? What should we not share? And people have been kind of going back and forth. There has been like this debate on social media. And to me, so I saw this a few weeks ago, this post by Sarah Bezzi. I think she's a uh, like nutritionist or something on social media. And I'm not going to lie. I found what she wrote to be really, really stupid. And a bunch of people that I know and follow on Instagram shared this. And I kept my mouth shut, didn't want to say anything, but this is what it said. To my Lebanese fellows, just because I'm going out with friends and sharing it on social media doesn't mean that I'm a traitor to my country. Just because I'm avoiding negative news doesn't mean that I'm not patriotic. Just because I'm sharing what I'm having for lunch doesn't mean that I'm not a responsible citizen. This means I'm human and my mind needs a break. Posting about other things than the current crisis in Lebanon doesn't make anyone insensitive, bad, or non-patriotic. Imagine having sad news exclusively all over social media for months, all the time. Wouldn't that bring us all down and lead us to immense depression? Like, is this really what you're concerned about, Hella? Like, to me, that's just stupid excuses to just justify posting the bullshit she wants to post. We are a depressed nation. We need to let go of all this anger and frustration, as well as this intense fear of the unknown. Because let's face it, we have no idea where we are heading in this country. Let people decompress the way they want to, be it by going out, staying in, jogging, laughing, reading, to each their own harmless way to cope with things. And this was shared a bunch by mostly people who go out and share their outings a lot. Okay, I'm not going to lie. And then she had like this caption 
So I've been seeing so many posts and stories lately shaming people for going out and sharing their happy moments on social media and I just had to share some of my thoughts, blah blah, the truth is we're all affected by the situation, etc, etc. No, we are not in denial, we just deal with things in our own way, so let's stop bullying and spreading negativity here and, and uh, whatever, as much as we can. Look, I think, I think this is stupid, I think. Just keep it in your fucking pants for a while, okay? Lebanon is going through an unprecedented crisis. It is unprecedented. Almost no countries on earth go through what we're going through right now. So, like, it's okay. It is okay if just for a brief amount of time, uh, we change our social media habits. No one's telling you not to go out. But I don't know where the fuck you're going out. Mafi mezout, mafi mataim, maftuha. Wherever the fuck you're going out to party, I go do it. Okay, mahadan elumaik. But yeah, don't share it on social media. That is weird, and that does make you missional unpatriotic. But it makes you insensitive. We are living through unprecedented times. Don't share your fucking plate of spaghetti or whatever the fuck you're doing on on Instagram. It's okay. And it does make you insensitive. And it does seem silly. Like who the I don't give a fuck that you're eating spaghetti. What the Trust me, your posts look like the dumbest fucking Instagram posts when everyone else is sitting without fucking electricity. Ali Saab posted something that I loved a few days ago. He is a photographer in Lebanon. He wrote, You really have some balls posting about a party in Fara. Fuck all of you for being so insensitive, li living in a bubble that will burst so soon and you'll realize that your money will not be able to buy you dignity anymore. Also, fuck all those who are hosting parties in times of crisis, instead of being in front of politicians' houses, burning them to the ground. And if anyone mentions or starts sending messages claiming that these parties are providing work opportunities for people, go fuck yourself. Use those resources you have to light your dying city instead of lighting up a party. I fully agree with Ali. Hello. Obviously, uh, it's easier said than done. Like, not everyone can go protest and stand in front of a politician's house, etc. I get that. But I get, I fully agree with the sentiment. Stop fucking defending these dumb people that want to share shit on social media. We're not fucking bullying people. It's just common fucking courtesy. Okay? It's just common courtesy. And here's our friend Rina Gandur, the day of the Hakkar fire. That's, where, that's what she was up to. And this was all on her Instagram. Chou, Gilbert Montagnier, hein, Rena? Gilbert Montagnier, hein? Oh, you think I don't know Gilbert? Yeah, like to me, don't post this kind of shit. Now, on that topic, Linda Christina, a TikToker that I've spoken about in my TikTok special uh, for her vlogs and everything, kind of broke the internet when she shared a TikTok about her spontaneous trip to Turkey. And let's just watch it because it's it's incredibly cringe and let's see if, if it's insensitive or something. I'm going to spend a week in Bodrum, Turkey, Mas Habi. I decided to vlog the trip for YouTube. Such a spontaneous trip. And those are always the best ones. But in the airport, it was crazy how long the lines were. You guys, the turbulence was scary. The landing was even worse. But alhamdulillah, we reached safely. Ubesu Salnai unpacked, showered, and got ready to walk around. We were so hungry. snacks, and then went back to our hotel. pool for a few hours. It was really nice. And that's it. Shufkun bukra. Bye. I pasta. So, I mean, look. She's a young girl, man. I don't even... She might still be in college or, like, some shit. I don't know. So I'm not here to, like, shit on her. But I was like, this is a little bit insensitive. Like, I get it. You're rich as fuck. You're happy. Be happy. But so maybe don't share this right now or, like, try to share things that can raise awareness about the situation. Like, I don't know, man. I don't want to... I don't personally don't give a fuck. I honestly hate social media. I spend... The only time I spend on social media is to promote my fucking podcast. I don't give a fuck what any of you guys do, what you eat, where you go. La aide. But this is just, she's living on another fucking planet. Like, maybe she is miserable, like all of us deep down. She's doing a great job of hiding it. Because she does not seem miserable. She seems happier than all of us put together. And richer. This dude did a hilarious parody on Twitter. His name is Bespshil Mout. Uh, it's Rafael. A more accurate vlog. I love spontaneous trips. Sabah al khair. So today I woke up at 8 because my fi benzin, my mom atle omen ibn zarab benzin. I had such a funny road trip. Ya Allah, I love Lebanon. Then after waiting 3 hours in line, 
رحت على الفرن بدي اجيب خبز بيكوز ابيرنتلي ما بقى في باجات سو وي هاد سم فيري جود اند جاست سو جود اند ديليشيس باند كومباني حسيت حالي لايك اي ام ان ذا جيتو يو نو او ماي جاد اي لاف ماي لايف تو سو سبونتينيوس سوتش اي كول اند فون داي يا الله اوكي سو And I mean, look again. Linda Christina does these fucking vlogs every day. I could spend a whole episode just looking at Linda Christina vlogs. Okay, that was her second day in Turkey. If you felt like the controversy deterred her from dropping more, it did not. صباح الخير كيف كنا اليوم تروقت أملات وشربت أيس كافي وأرنا نقضي النهار حد البول التأس ببادروم كتير حلو little hot actually very hot but perfect for a pool day خدت صور ونزلتونا إنستا so if you want to go check them out وبعد الظهر خير تيب وحطيت make up while listening to some music and this is the outfit of the night a black long sleeve flowy dress ورحنا عمود لونج بي مات هوتل كتير حبيت الديكور والأكل كان طيب طلبنا سوشي كمان فتنا لجوا saw the art and just walked around and then we went back to the hotel we're staying at and sat by the pool again at night we just saw the art like she's trying to say something smart and she's like fuck it man we just we just fucking saw the art like, i don't know what to say about this person man she she definitely does not seem like the kind of person i would ever want to hang out with like so vain so shallow just sharing all the stupidity on fucking tiktok i'm sorry i'm not trying to be an asshole i know you have your audience this this kind of shit just especially now like who gives a fuck And to be fair, again, like I know I'm complaining about something that I shouldn't be complaining about. There was a bunch of people defending her, you know what I mean? Like, y'all forget who to throw your frustrations on, but oops, remember to judge a girl who's literally minding her own business when she's on a spontaneous trip and she's going to do it with you. How are you talking about the snowflakes? And look, I mean, he's right. He's right. And then someone responds by saying, it's not that you're not allowed to post about your trip. As a rich Lebanese who thinks it's more than okay to flex your lavish lifestyle amidst a severe economic crisis that's worsening with days, but rather the fact that you need to be more considerate, especially nowadays. There's a fine line between these two. I'm not going to mass report you for some content that I find insensitive, but that will not stop you from criticizing you. It's that simple. Again, I agree. Like no one's going after uh, Linda Christina with pitchforks, but it's like, hey, eh, you know. One other person who definitely doesn't give a fuck about what people think is Joseph Shada, folks. Let's check this out. Let's check out our boy. Hello, guys. Today, I decided to ask Temaki from Sushi Holic. No one will tell me why I'm asking this question in this situation. Because he's coming out. What do I do? One spicy salmon, one salmon avocado, one salmon with crab. ما بعرف ليه حاطين لي تشوب ستيكس صراحة ما في لزوم مع انه يعني هودي بتاكلوا بالايد مباشرة كريمين حاطين لي معها اثنين سوي صوص واثنين جينجر رح بلش بالسبايسي سامن اممم اممم انا اي دونت فوك وذ سوشي اني ثينك را فعلا نكهتها سبايسي ما في زوم حتى الوسابي لانه اصلا هي حره زود الطوقه ملفوف فور كريسبينس غطوها منيح بقلب السوي صوص <تصفيق> ناخذ شويه جينجر لنغير طعم السمنة ومنبلش بالسامن كراب مثل العادة بزيد فوق صوص يامي يامي اي لاف ات وراحت الكهرباء ويلكم تو لبنان بعد في عنا اخر حبة اللي هي السامن افوكادو زيد فوقها ملفوف وكتير سوي صوص لدرجة انها تشرشر <تصفيق> احلى شي التماكي الايد صحتين انجوي تحية للسي اي كي اوكي 
How's this two minutes and a half? Aren't TikTok supposed to be like up to a minute? Someone explain it to me in the comments how he has a TikTok that's that long. Yeah, that's gross. Don't do that either. That's just disgusting. Not because it's insensitive. That's just disgusting. Joseph Shubekhe, that's gross, man. All right. Okay, so our next topic revolves around this Lebanese ski champion called Nour Kairouz and some pretty racist comments she made about Syrian refugees on her Instagram stories like three weeks ago. I've been wanting to talk about this for like three weeks, but I just haven't had the opportunity given, given COVID and the shooting schedules and everything and electricity. Just before we get into it, I am not an expert on refugees, on all of that sort of thing, the situation in, in Syria. I, am, I do not qualify to talk about this, but I'm going to give my opinion on it as like a fucking human being. Okay, so first let's watch the video. It is a three minute collection of fucking stories like she went fucking at it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'd love to know what you guys think. Hi, with all my respect to the refugees, I totally... You know, shit's gonna get into some racist, dark territory when you start like, no offense to the refugees, no offense, okay? You know, you know it's about to get pretty offensive. Understand that you but it's time for you to go back to your country. I couldn't keep it in. I couldn't keep this racism bottled inside anymore. I had to tell the Syrians to fuck off. They can go back and very safe to So that's why I put it on. No, thank you. We don't need your help. But we don't need you to help. That's what I'm saying. But I'm not going to be يعني انتو اذا بدكن عن جد تعملوا عمل انساني وانتو عن جد بت بت بتحكوا بالانسانية شغل الانسانية مصبوط اوكي ما تزيدوا العبء علينا ونحنا نموت من الجوع كرمال انتو عم بتنادوا بالانسانية I'm so sorry هاي دي بطلت انسانية okay so she's just unloaded a lot a lot of racist stuff in there but first let me just acknowledge a couple of things where she's not entirely wrong Yes, Lebanon is currently hosting 1.5 million Syrian refugees. We are a tiny, extremely poor country. We can't really handle that many refugees. It's not the refugees' fault. She's making it sound like it's their fault. They're, like, they're happy to be here. They're living the high life, getting free education, free food, and free money. Bro, according to the UNHCR, 9 out of 10 Syrian refugee families in Lebanon are living in extreme, extreme poverty. 
living conditions for Syrian refugees these people don't want to be here trust me if they could go back home and if, if it were a safe option for them to go back home they would have done it okay have a bit of humanity the rest of the international community has abandoned us they have abandoned these refugees and they've left us and they're more than happy to let Lebanon handle them and we can barely handle ourselves but to shift the blame, Ka'anno, it's the refugees' fault that we're going through what we're going. This is what politicians are great at doing. When they want to shift the blame, they want to distract you. Now, right now, instead of you dropping a three-minute video complaining about Lebanese politicians and our corrupt politicians, you're complaining about Syrian refugees, powerless, poor refugees who are living in shitty fucking conditions. You are now ranting about them for three minutes. You just talked about the Syrian refugees and how they're ruining the country. Shu'amlu. Matrin. They have no food. They have no access to clean water. I don't know where you're pulling this shit out that they're getting paid in dollars or that they're here to take over the country. That is just like old racist propaganda talk. And you're doing exactly what the government wants you to do. You are distracted. You are shifting the blame to a poor and powerless part of our society rather than focusing on the problem at hand. Does Lebanon have too many Syrian refugees? Unfortunately, yes. But Skamina, the way she's referring to them is like, as if there's some kind of fucking zbele. Here's this trash. We don't want this garbage. You take it. No, you take it. Aid it, bro. We should be honored to have these fucking people here and trying to help them. We're, we should be apologizing to them because of how badly we're able to help them rather than in the for some fucking bullshit. That's just how I see it. I know a lot of you guys are going to disagree. But to me, this just came off as incredibly insensitive, incredibly stupid. Like, And you're like a fucking ski champion who's supposed to represent us internationally in front of the international community. You can't be fucking talking like this and being so insensitive and so ignorant and so stupid and so racist. Like, I don't want you representing Lebanon in ski. I don't give a fuck how good of a skier you are, but that's just not how you fucking talk about this shit. I don't think I need to be a geopolitical expert to understand that the Syrian refugees that we have here are unhappy to be here. Most of them, okay, most of them would love to go back. They're living in shit, shit, shit conditions. They have no access to clean water, no access to food, no access to education, no access to money. And she's making it sound like they're living the high life and then, and that the UN is trying to kick out Lebanese people so that Syrians can take over. It's just so like and shit like that. man, Just get out of this fucking mentality. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in to episode 29. I know this was a little bit weird. I know I was a little bit down. I know it was cobbled together haphazardly. Um, I apologize. Uh, I, think you under I think you understand why. Uh, like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, help me get to 5,000 subscribers. Um, stay strong. I know, I know we're all going through fucking hell right now. Please stay strong. I am with you. Um, help each other out in the community, in the comments. Um, reach out to me if you need anything. And thank you to everyone who reached out to me on Instagram by DM when I posted that I was feeling pretty down yesterday. I haven't been able to respond to all of your comments, mainly for battery consumption and stuff. But thank you. I love you guys. Um, and as usual, try to not worry.